<laughs> We're live on Facebook. You, you guys are you, finally starting to experience what my life was you like. You dropped the joke school. right before I went live. Yeah. <laughs> All good. So now it's just the starting of a show, just me laughing my ass off for no apparent reason. So maybe you want to repeat your joke? Maybe I'll repeat it on Discord. Uh, all right. Where you can uh, join for as little as $3. Oh, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> all right. Brother Art, Brother Art, where are you at? What's up, guys? Can you see me? I got to shut this you off. You got me? Uh, let's see here. Ken's big grape is in the way. Go ahead, Brother Art. Go ahead. Yeah. You got me now? Why is it not doing it now? Now it's not flipping back and forth. Go figure. Hold on. Hold on. I got something else to try. <clears throat> Welcome to my nightmare, Brother Art. Yeah, I know. Welcome to my nightmare. Oh, yeah. I got it working. I did have it working. It's Two fine. months ago, I was flipping back and forth. Now it's not. Go figure. This is your fault, too, Ken, just so you know. It's his, it's his show until something goes wrong. Then it's our show, too. <laughs> oh, God. There's two of Ken. I got to get rid of that quickly. Maybe there are two of Ken. Maybe he's a clone. Hold on. How did I do it last time with Trinsky? Maybe Ken built a robot of himself, like an android of himself. <laughs> got to stop. <laughs> I'm trying to get this shit fixed, and it's just not. No, but we're, we're live, though, so people want to be entertained, right? I'm entertaining. Dance. Get up and dance. Do you want me to do that? Buff Did you see the video of me doing that Buffalo oh Bill dance God. from uh, Silence of the Lambs? That was disturbing, but funny as hell. You keep it up. I'm going to play uh, Shawn Michaels' Sexy Boy and start dancing. Yeah, please don't. You go, baby. Go. <laughs> please, don't. All right, I think we're good. I got our up here as long as uh, yeah, it'll flip back and forth. We need a delay, though, but we're good to go. So uh, let's fire it up. All right, ready? Here we go. Five, four, three, two. Hello and welcome to the Freemasons podcast. Oh, the freaking thing. The sound devices are working. Stand by. Oh, my look. Art's laughing One at us thing. right now. Right? I know, right? Because Oh, Christ. Yeah, what yeah, the hell? That's my computer yelling at me. Sorry. I apologize. Hello and welcome to the Freemasons podcast with your hosts, Right Worship Brother George Mudry, Worship Brother Joe, and Worship Brother Ken. And with us tonight, we have again back on the show. This time, a little bit more high tech than last time. Yeah, I think we're our first return guest, right? First return guest, yeah. Worship Brother Art Del Cueto. How you doing, Worship Brother? <laughs> doing good, man. Thank you for having me on again. Uh, our pleasure. How are you doing out there with all this uh, COVID um, craziness, quarantine, all that stuff? How's the family? How are you? Surviving. The family's doing good. Uh, I, I go out and work still, so I, I still had to go out and, there and work. Right. Uh, we have a lot of the individuals <laughs> that were detailed to some other areas. They were sent back to the stations so they can go ahead and assist with things that needed to be done on uh, border mm -hmm. security. Uh, I mean, I could stay doing the union stuff, which I still am, mm -hmm. but I chose to go out there and volunteer and help out. You know, there's no sense in, in not being out there with the guys that I represent. So I took that extra initiative and I'm out there helping them out uh, working the field. At the same time, when I get done, I go back to the union office. I got to do all the union stuff that needs to be done. So it's been nonstop. So I'm working pretty much between 18 and 19 hour days. Wow. <sighs> Jesus. Wow. Well, now I feel really special that you came back on the show to, to spend a little time with us, brother. Now, see, the whole time well, I... You know what? Go I'll ahead. tell you what's funny, and, 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 and obviously I love being with you guys, and you guys are awesome. Uh, I, I love listening to the show. I love everything about you guys, man. You guys are cool. But uh, I had, I had set you. aside a couple of hours uh, anyway because I, I, I kind of dropped the ball. I thought it was WrestleMania weekend. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> well, well, the, it's next weekend. Well, it's yeah, it's next weekend. It's going to be two days now. You know that, right? Saturday and Sunday. I know that. I know that now. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I'll be watching. I'll be watching. We were supposed to do an event. We were going to go down to uh, the shrine. I think they got shut down though, right? Yeah, because they're not. Uh, we can't gather there anymore. We were going to do a live broadcast from Pyramid Shriners down in Stratford, Connecticut. I don't know if you saw the Champ the Clown episode we had. Um, 
with the Shriners clown that came in and does this whole wrestling thing. And we were going to do this big event and I was going to start taunting, wow. I was going to start taunting him and, and cutting promos and stuff on him. But with this whole thing, we're going to have to, uh, we're going to have to save that for maybe SummerSlam or something like that. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure yeah. we can reschedule the, it. The Chinese flu put a damper in everyone's plans. <laughs> <laughs> Why does it got to be the Chinese flu? I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Oh. That's a joke. That's a joke. Because <laughs> it's Chinese food. So it's from Chinese China. Chinese food. Chinese martial arts. <laughs> Chinese flu. Right. <laughs> All right, brother. I love having you on, man. You're a freaking right. <laughs> That's why we wanted to bring it back on. Like this is just, just to shoot the crap. We had such a good time last time you were on, uh, and uh, you know, we, we, and, you, and you guys are the only ones drinking. <laughs> I know, right? What's up with that? Hey, we gotta we gotta keep doing what we're doing. <clears throat> so then I have to apologize. I thought you were. I mean, granted, I knew you were probably still working, but I thought most of you and your family were under quarantine, like the rest of us. Again. Here up in our freaking bubble in Connecticut, you know, we're pretty much, uh, they're, you know, the, the president's talking about locking down the tri-state area pretty much. Yeah, but, he's, yeah, a central, no, it, he's a central person. They've talked about it here, the governor, a little bit. I mm. think uh, as of yesterday, last I checked, I think they had 13 deaths in, in Arizona and 665 confirmed cases. Mm -hmm. uh, I hate to be number 666, mm -hmm. uh, you know, in more ways than one. <laughs> right. But, you know, it's it's... I mean, it's, it is, it's, it's scary, uh, but who would have thought so many people didn't wash their hands, you know, that's such or a wipe their ass. Nowadays. Or wipe yeah. their ass. <laughs> yeah, clearly they weren't using as much toilet paper, like that's. Yeah, yeah, that was a problem too. So did anybody else see the pickup lines though for the COVID-19? Yes, I did see oh my God. I saw that on Facebook. They were the still like, hey baby. You can't spell quarantine without U-R-A-Q-T. <laughs> <laughs> Or, hey, baby, good. I could be your Prince Charmin. <laughs> that was my personal you know favorite. <laughs> I, saw, I saw a lot of people complaining about the lines at Costco and not finding any toilet paper. I have a Costco literally about two miles away from here. Mm. So if I need to go to the bathroom, I just use their bathroom. There's no even need to buy toilet paper. You just use someone else's restroom. And there You're you good go. to go. So, uh, for our, <laughs> so we have a lot of British listeners, right? Some of them who live in the United States, but they're still British, right? So Washington brother Joseph Schultz asks, Brother Art, can you deport Danny Collins and put Nate Moss and Jamie Carter on watch list? I have addresses. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, I sent you a link a long time ago for our Discord and our Patreon. Oh man, these guys are freaking brutal. <laughs> if you can't, if you can't count on your brothers in these times, to be honest with you, I don't know who you can count on. Yeah, and you know, honestly, <laughs> we have uh, we have a lot of fun with, uh, and it's good that we're doing this in a lighthearted manner and keeping you know brotherly love, all that going on continued, because. Uh, you can go freaking stir crazy stuck in your freaking house under quarantine for a while. So. Absolutely. Absolutely. But I do have some questions. Yeah, it, it was crazy and it was busy. So my lodge does uh, uh, a certain Friday of the month. We get together at the shrine and we have mm -hmm. like, uh, you know, family. We call it 86 family night. So we all hang out. We stay there late. You know, there's there's obviously adult beverages there. There's uh, mm -hmm. fish fry and steaks and karaoke and all kinds of stuff. And uh, we had one just before this whole shutdown occurred, right? And uh, one of my brothers, Eric Dupree, sends a message, and I said, hey, man, I can't do it today. I've been real busy. I got a bunch of things going. I have to prep. There's just so much. When you work with the government, there's just so much things that you have to prep for because they don't know what they're doing anyway, so you might as well, you know, prep on your own. <laughs> so I was trying to do so much stuff, and he sends me a message. goes, that's, that's BS, man. You got time to hang out with your brothers before something happens, you know, and I, he made me feel so guilty and, and I haven't seen him since. So it's kind of feel bad, but it's, I think it's put a real big damper on, you know, Masonic activities, mm. but I mean, thank God you guys are around seriously because, you know, there's still, there's still ways to connect and people need to understand that, you know, fortunately we have uh, Facebook and Instagram and, uh, you know, FaceTime and everything else you can do. So there's so many, so many ways that you can still connect with family and friends. Uh, right. And it's cool that we can, you know, joke around about it. I mean, I know it's a serious issue and some guys are going to, you know, the, the, you know, the fun party police is going to jump on here and say, Oh, you guys are joking around. You know, that's, that's all you got, you know, right now, right. you know, are we supposed to just sit in our homes and tremble in the corner and, and be in fear? Right. No, first and foremost, you know, we're Americans and second, you know, we're all Freemasons and, uh, you know, we're, we're free thinkers 
And that's what it's about, to be able to say, hey, you know what? At the end of the day, when that reaper comes, I'm going to shake his hand and I'm going to laugh in his face before he takes me. That's the way it's going to be. Right. I uh, love that positivity, worshipful brother Art. I love it. Absolutely. And you have to have that during this time. That's something that we talked about when everything started to happen was that, you know, let's, let's put out more content. Let's try to do more mm. for our listeners because this might be the only break they get for that hour or two on Thursdays and, and Sundays. And we've even gone more on Discord right. and done that. This might be their only escape. So, you know, we're, we're, we'll get into some... I guess we'll call them technical questions mm-hmm. as far as what's going on in the border and how your profession is uh, yep. is being affected. Ask by this. me anything you want. But we're gonna. It doesn't matter, man. You guys, yeah. ask me anything you want. I'm we'll good. do a little bit of that, but we don't want that to be the main focus. We just want to shoot shit with you a little bit. It's been a while since we've spoken to you, and we want to catch up and just just have some of that fun. So there may be some of those questions, but not that many. We want to not focus on that aspect of it. People come here for that escape, and uh, we're just looking to have a lot of fun. Right on. Uh, so I have to. I'm getting. I'm getting chewed apart here by the British listeners saying uh, that I'm not responding to them. So uh, I'll do a. <clears throat> Nathan Moss says I don't need a watch list. I'll El Chapo it and tunnel under the ocean. Give me a few years and a spoon. <laughs> <laughs> Freaking, these guys are insane. Um, <clears throat> So I got a couple questions for you. Number one, what's going on down at the border? I know I heard there was a partial closing. What exactly are you guys? I mean, besides the obvious, the fentanyl and the drugs and everything, what and the right. you know, illegal aliens coming through. What else are you guys doing now? Now that you now have to add, you know, hats off to all you 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 guys down there at the border. You know, of all the shit that you had to deal with, now you got to deal with this as well. Um, one of the things I had seen actually earlier today was actually a. Uh, it was, again, maybe you can um, shed some light on what's fake news and real. But I, one of the things I had seen was that there's actually fake fentanyl tests coming across the border now. Do you hear anything about this or see anything about this? So that I haven't seen. See, what a lot of people don't understand is there's a, there's a separation between the agents that are working out there. Those are the guys in green. Mm-hmm. And the people that work at the customs and uh, the OFO Office of Field Operations they dress in blue. They're more uh, on the front door. This is the way I like to see it. So uh, what happens is, you know, everyone's under uh, DHS, but there's a custom side of the house. They work uh, at the ports of entries. And then there's border patrol side of the house. They work in between the ports. So we handle more of what uh, the individuals that are trying to break into the country legally, right. uh, the big loads of, of uh, drugs that are coming across uh, the border. Mm-hmm. So there is a difference. Uh, now, it's it's been disappointing and i think a lot of it is because so everyone's got a union they call it a council because if you say union everyone freaks out and people don't like unions and myself mm-hmm. so i call it a council myself right uh, so what happens is uh, thank god we're around because we can call out the bs that sometimes is being done by some of the leadership in the government and as an example you know they they were very focused on uh, the the chinese virus chinese flu whatever you want to call it coming through and they were handing out uh, the wrong type of masks at first to the workforce. So we jumped on that right off the bat, make sure that there was the right type of masks. Another thing that we had issues with is, and people don't get it, when you're dealing with huge groups that are turning themselves in, there's there's four different shifts. Most stations have about four different shifts. Mm -hmm. So what happens is different people are always transporting. So what we came and, and we suggested was that you have a group of individuals that are going to volunteer just to transport. So it'll be those same guys transporting every day. That way you limit the, the guys that are getting exposed. At the same time, it's the same vehicles that are constantly going to be used for transport, so you limit the vehicles that are being exposed. Then you turn around and you limit the amount of guys that are volunteering to go process. That way that is also limited. So... Uh, it's, it's horrible because uh, to a point, and hats off to the guys that volunteered, uh, including the national president. He came down, he's out of Montana, and he, tra- he came out here to Tucson to help process and volunteered to drive. Honestly, hats off, to, hats off to those guys because what are they saying when they're volunteering for that position? They're saying, hey, you know what? I want to be pretty much the first guy that's going to get exposed to these type of communicable diseases mm-hmm. or – the first one that's going to be around most of the individuals that can commu- can give me that kind of disease. So those guys, to me, are superheroes, man, to be honest. Yeah. Um, so that was broken down. 
Then the president gave us uh, another authority that allows us to be able to arrest individuals and send them back to their country immediately, as opposed to having to detain them here and go through all the, you know, the, the Mickey Mouse courts that uh, mm -hmm. sometimes they just don't work. Mm -hmm. So that was another big move that we have, were able to get. And then he said, you know, we're going to close down the ports of entry just to essential traffic. Right. Now, I don't represent the agents that work at the ports of entry. Mm -hmm. But the problem is that there's different managers. They're different what they call port directors at different ports. Right. And they've chosen to uh, pretty much not follow the directive that has been given by the president, mm -hmm. which that ought to upset anyone. I don't care if you're like left-leaning or right leaning you know at the end of the day right. uh, the Chinese flu does not discriminate it'll give it to anyone so that's where the big issue is right now uh, that I've been seeing and I've been talking to my friends that work at the port and they're saying it's business as usual they haven't really been limiting who comes across and who doesn't come across so that upset me I put something up on my official Instagram page a couple nights ago mm -hmm. where there was a, a truck that, that was able to cross into the United States from Mexico right and, and you know what? I'm all for helping everyone out. I think we all are on this show and everyone that's that's listening and the people that are commenting. Right. But at the end of the day, you know, you have a vehicle that came across from Mexico. First and foremost, they were allowed to come in. They went to a local Walmart there on the border and they parked on the side. And I don't know if they had a deal with somebody at Walmart or what it was, but within a couple of minutes, they were bringing and unloading a crate of milk. So this individual from Mexico was loading a crate of milk into his truck and taking it back south when you have regular citizens and the elderly that can't even get enough you right. know, supplies. But you have regular citizens now that are going to Walmart and different stores and they're limiting their, them to just one gallon. Here's a guy from another country, got, was able to come in here, load an entire truckload. So that I'm upset at the port people for, uh, obviously. Now, you know... On our side of the house, there was several individuals that were arrested from India and their their passports were stamped that they had gone through Spain and that they had gone through Italy, So, which are hot zones right now. Oh, wow. wow. And, yeah, so Border Patrol did everything the way they were supposed to do it. I need to be clear with that, you know, because everyone looks wow. at CBP and it's always one. It's not. Yep. Border Patrol did everything right. Then they were turning over these 16 individuals to ICE facilities and they were supposed to detain them uh, and make sure they were quarantined before, you know, anything went uh, through of, of checking if they had a, a valid asylum claim. However, they would have to wait in their own country anyway because obviously the president gave that order, right? You don't wait here. Mm -hmm. Well, what ICE chose to do is they chose to turn over these individuals to Catholic services. So what Catholic services would do is it would detain them for maybe a couple hours and then it would send them out into the population and never been vetted, never been isolated, never knew nothing about it. I mean, I'm not saying they're infected, but right. you don't know until you, you know, detain them long enough, not. especially if they went through the hot zones. Yeah. So when, when I found about uh, when I found out about that, I, I raised bloody hell. And uh, <laughs> for some reason, you know, at first they called me a liar, which I really got upset. So the director of ICE, when I talked to the media, he said I was a liar. And uh, but then when he didn't realize I was going to get all the proof including the name of the ICE agent that refused to take the bodies at the ICE facility. And then he retracted his story. Uh, he never he never said he, he had called me a liar. However, I have an email that he sent calling me a liar, so he can't deny it now. Uh, but he, he turned around and he said that there was some miscommunication, that they now were able to find these 16 uh, nationals from India, and they, had, they were able to find bed space for them in... Uh, their detention facility also. So me blowing these stories up is, is causing them to actually do their job. And I think uh, it, it shouldn't take me to do it, especially during these times. People need to be aware of it. But what is an eye-opener for me that people need to understand is these are just a couple of stories right. that I'm aware of and I blew up. If I'm not made aware of these stories and I don't talk about them and I don't blow them up and they're not held accountable, they get away with it. Right. So what other things have they gotten away with that the public has never known? Yeah, that's scary to think about. No, and that's why it's an it's important that uh, there are people like you out there that, that do what they do and you know call BS when this stuff starts to happen because, 
like you said, otherwise everything was fine and dandy until the guy knew he was busted and couldn't dispute what you were saying. And then all of a sudden yep. he recants his story. Oh, it was a miscommunication. No, you, you're free. And they were able to find beds. That's what's funny. They didn't have 16 beds for these individuals before. And then all of a sudden when they get called out to the carpet. Then they out. magically appear. Well, yeah, but what they <laughs> right. able to, to say to the American public, and, and I happen to know because I have a text that says it, is the same time that they released those 16, they also released two Romanians in the city of Phoenix, and uh, no one's out answered up whether they know where those individuals are. Jesus. Yeah, so, Wishful, but uh, I think it's good that we're talking about this because one of the things I was going to ask you about is, you know, I, I think we all get a lot of spam emails, right? And right. some of the stuff I've been getting lately, and, you know, the criminals that are involved in, in scamming over email and via phone and text and stuff like that, they're nothing if not opportunists, right? And with all this going on right now, it seems like it's a whole new, you know, opportunity to exploit the public. Right, and use this as a, a means by which they can, you know, capitalize and, and get ahead and scam more people. So I was going to ask you, you know, are you guys seeing a lot of opportunistic criminals and stuff in your profession that are taking advantage of this situation, this, you know, world health crisis for their own ends? You know, I, I think, honestly, just those individuals that were hoarding all the toilet paper and everything else, and now they're standing in a street corner trying to sell it for 15 bucks a roll. Uh, I think those guys are criminals in their own. You know, I live in a, in a, in a community, basically, where a lot of the in, individuals that live here, and it's funny if you guys are going to uh, laugh at this one, but most of the individuals that where I live, they're older people. I live in a community where it's older people. I don't, I mean, that just, that's always been me. It's just easier. That way, if, if somebody's rowdy in the neighborhood, I always know I'm me. <laughs> I'm <laughs> <a culprit. laughs> yeah, yeah. My neighbors are people. <laughs> But, you know, I, I, we've communicated, my wife and I, we've communicated to the neighbors and we've talked to them, you know, if they need anything, let us know, you know, because they're elderly. And I think that's that's a real crime at the end of the day. We need to understand that, th first of all, it's, it's a fact that this virus affects older people more than the younger people, right? Correct. And, but it's the younger people that are hoarding all this, these supplies. So what's being affected is these older people are going to have the means to have some of these supplies. So I think that alone, those are opportunists. I, I also saw a story of some individuals out in California that were wearing the full body suits and, uh, you know, like the, the, the chem suit with the mask. And they were going to different neighborhoods saying, mm -hmm. you know, we're here to check on your, on your, uh, uh, I you seen know, you posted that. Good, all this you got to worry about all that. Yeah, I see you posted uh, so that a couple days ago. At the end of the day, you know, if you hoard all the bread and I hoard all the guns, tomorrow you I'm going to hoard your bread, baby. <laughs> that's the way it works. You win. Uh, so I've been busy hoarding. I've been busy hoarding bullets and, and, and guns my entire life, way before this happened. Right. So it is what it is, man. All my brothers, you guys are welcome to come into my house and, you know, we'll – We'll take care of it. I want to go to Texas. I really do. I, I, I really, I've, oh, I've always wanted to go to Texas. Just, uh, I'm in Arizona. No, you're in Arizona. I, <laughs> I was going to let that go and let him dig, dig a deeper were, hole. I thought you were out in Texas. I apologize. You're over in Arizona then. Oh, All right. What made you think I was in Texas? I, you posted something a little while ago about something about in El Paso. You were talking about the roads. Now that now that the quarantine is done, can you guys fix the roads? I thought you said in El Paso. No, it was too so. Well, you know what, though? I will say this, and, and I, I know a lot of the people that are listening are going to cringe a little bit. El Paso happens to be my favorite city in Texas. <laughs> is that is it because that's where the Guerrero family is from? But, hey, they may have, that may have something to do with it. <laughs> I really like El Paso. I don't know. A lot of people dog on it. Um, I really like El Paso. I think El Paso, if, if there was one city in Texas I'd probably choose to move to, it would be El Paso. I like El Paso. I've always had. Mm. Yeah, I think you're biased because uh, you know, the Guerrero family is like wrestling royalty, big family, and they, uh, might, yeah. they always that hailed from it. El Paso. So that might be uh, something stuck in your head from your childhood. So I got a question you for you. You know what? So even, even Eddie decided to be buried in Arizona. <laughs> <laughs> so I got a question for you. Um <laughs> So, uh, again, I'm a Templar. I'm a Templar knight. I'm a uh, York Rite, all that stuff. I love the, the, the history and the, you know, the ancient Templars and all that stuff. Does it kind of right. piss you off just a hair that there's actually a cartel down there called Knights Templar? 
I think it's because it sounds cool to them. Right. But yeah, it's their Caballeros Templarios is what their name is. Say that fast three times. Jeez. But um, George yeah, couldn't say it. it George couldn't the, say it slow uh, once. No, I couldn't. <laughs> I'm like that guy. I remember. What was that movie? I remember. I mean, whether whether people use it for good or use it for bad, at the end of the day, we're all Freemasons and right. we're sexy. So everyone <laughs> wants to, to to be sexy. So everyone wants to claim something with with, with masonry. But brother art, some of us more than others. Some oh, of us are the more than others. The there we go. It, it, yeah, it's, well, just like the skulls, you know what I mean? Everyone freaks out, you know, on the skulls, and then, you know, we, we, we know the meaning. It's At the end of the day, you take off everything off and all the facade and money and skin color and hair and everything else, and what do you have? Just that same skull. We're all the same at the end. Absolutely. Uh, but I think that's what happens when you have these, you have these organizations that are trying so hard to be tough and hard. Um, you know, they, they pick up little names here and there that, that makes them sound a little bit tougher or makes them sound sexier. And right. these guys just pick up, you know, the Templars. You know, you temp saying Templars is a heck of a lot sexier than saying Chapels, gang. You got to remember that <laughs> one. Well, pretty soon they, they might start dyeing their hair red and growing beards if they want to be truly sexy. <laughs> That's right. Very nice. I didn't think I was going to let that go. Nah, no, I didn't think you were going to let that go. I was sure at some to. point there was going to be a ginger joke in there. Yeah. But, uh, there you go. What was I going to say? So, uh, yeah, I read about them because I, I do a lot of research. I look into the Knights Templar. It's like kind of the reason why I joined Freemasonry. And then when it pops up the cartel, I'm just like, oh, what the? F come on now. Like, why does this got to pop yeah, up? I felt the same way, man, because I know. You're gonna have those simple minds out there. They're gonna they're gonna say, "Oh, are they related? Are they they have something to do with it?" Or mm. just like they always throw the, the conspiracy theorists. And as I've said before, you know, I'm not Illuminati. I'm super naughty. <laughs> uh, but you know, everyone wants to just you know have their own ideas. <laughs> That's but, awesome. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so explain explain that you, like. So he's not laughing at you, brother. Right? No. There, there's stuff that comes across oh, the comments yeah. feed in here, and uh, <sighs> sometimes it just strikes us a little funny. So sometimes we're laughing at inopportune times. But yeah, you know, sometimes George gets beat up a lot in so, the comments, which is uh, really funny. Worship brother Greg Schultz. El Paso is where you can stand in the mud and get hit with dust. <laughs> 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 hey, I'm in Tucson, bro. So it's the same thing here. I can see it's the same for me. So, uh, you, so you're still masonically. You're still having lodge, all that stuff. Everything's still open for business. Are you guys closing down, uh, minimizing no, we it? Closed down. Closed down. We closed or... down. Um, you know, obviously the governor said, you know, no more than ten. Right. But mm -hmm. uh, hey, there's always a way to do certain things. So I can't let let you in on all the secrets. But uh, my brother's down in downtown 86. Um, they're, they're, we're still, we figured, they figured out a way. We all figured out a way to meet still. It's all good. <laughs> Jeremy Zegler, you can call the red haired ones, the soul stealers. So that's going to be the, that the, sounds pretty the cartel sexy. down there. That sounds pretty sexy. Oh my God. Wow. Um, so, uh, another question for you. I see, actually, I wanted to say, I seen you on uh, TV not too long ago and, uh, I was watching a live feed. I think it was Fox news. I was watching the live feed where, uh, he had called out uh, you, Brother Art, uh, by name of uh, the president, and I actually wrote in the live feed, like, Brother Art <laughs> <laughs> I was so excited to see that. So, uh, <clears throat> sorry, my throat's bothering me. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, man. No, 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 no. Yeah. I smoke a pack a day. That's my problem. On podcast. No, no, no. Yeah. I smoke a pack a day. That's my problem. Uh, what was I going to say? Um, so, other than that, down at the border, you're not... Uh, they they haven't closed the border then people are still able to move around so that that rumor can be dispelled right where it's like uh oh trump closed the borders down and all the thing like people are still allowed to come and go it's just being more closely monitored correct well i mean i'd like to, i'd like to tell you yes uh yeah. but the reality is we have a lot of uh never trumpers i guess that are still work within the government mm -hmm. and uh, those individuals are on their own plan which at the end of the day, this is what it comes down to. I've always said it. You know what I mean? I don't care about your political, uh, you know, leanings. you got to care for the American public, man. You know what I mean? And, right. and everyone on the far left and everyone on the far right or in the middle, wherever you're at, you know, at the end of the day, do you care about being an American? Do you care about American lives or what do you care about? You know, and that's what it comes down to. Right. Uh, I don't care what side of the aisle these individuals stand on. Uh, they need to realize that American lives are being lost. 
Uh, and obviously, you're going to get the guys, you know, everyone in the world is being lost. I get that. You know, I understand that. Right. But, you know, as American citizens, what's wrong with saying my number one priority is the citizens of my country being okay? Right. There's nothing wrong with saying that. You, you say that about your home, you know, at the end mm -hmm. of the day. You know, you, you lock your doors at night. Why? Because you care about the people inside, not because you hate my, your neighbors. Uh, and right. our nation's borders need to be the same way. And that's what I've always thought about. So, you know, I'd like to say that they're being more uh, closely monitored. But realistically, it just depends on the shift. And it depends on who the port director is at the time. And, and you know, that's that's part of the problem that I've been speaking out against lately. Right. Uh, where's your brother Joseph Schultz? Uh, brother Art, are you running for Congress? No, I hate when they ask that. <laughs> no, I, I, I know. No, um, no political know, ambitions asked, whatsoever. Like, several people mm -hmm. and, and several uh, groups about it. Uh, but I will be honest, uh, at the end of the day, uh, I have right around four and a half years till I'm eligible for retirement. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not going to throw away a federal retirement for anything. <laughs> I don't know what will happen afterwards, yep. uh, to be honest. Uh, but, I mean, I don't want to say uh, I'm going to do it. I don't want to say I'm not because I don't know where my head's going to be in four years. I can tell you if I retired today... I would not be doing it. Uh, you know, I want to dedicate a little bit more time to Lodge. You know, this, this, yeah. the last three years have been a whirlwind, uh, you know, and, and more time to my family. I think at the end of the day, you know, I have a young mm -hmm. daughter. Uh, right. You know, I have a son. I have three grandkids, for Christ's sake. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I know I don't look at it because I'm young, 180 pounds of twisted steel and sex appeal. But <laughs> there you go. <laughs> That's yeah. awesome. That's how Joe rolls, too. I know. That's why, that's why Brother Art and I get along so well. I to my family. I mean, just, I mean, just how busy we've been the last three years as, as a country, uh, how busy I've been. Uh, I don't know. I mean, that's where my head is at. Uh, I, have, I have some old cars that I have projects that I want to fix. Ooh, and, cool. and I kind of would like to talk to the youth. I mm. think that's what I want to do. If I do anything, I'll set something up where I can talk to people, motivate people. Uh, I came from a, from a really small town on, on the border, okay? Mm -hmm. And it, it was a rough town, and it's still a rough town to this day. And the first time I ever saw heroin uh, being used, I was in sixth grade. Jesus. You know what I mean? And, and I think that's a big issue. And that's Shit. back, you know, before heroin did their, their, set, their second kick, because right now heroin's a big problem again. Yeah, you know, honestly, yeah. like none of these I, things happened when we were kids. Like I didn't see pot till I was like mid high school, and I was like, "Oh my god!" I thought that, like, like, "Oh my god!" Yeah. Like I freaked the fuck well, out. Now, now you're hearing about stories about kids who are like freaking shooting heroin right in like like eighth grade. Like what the hell? Well, you didn't see it because it was on the upper shelf. Oh, you son of a bitch! You're making short <laughs> jokes again, Art. <laughs> Damn. All right. Um, no, but no, well, that threw me off because, like I said. Look, I'll be, I'm always honest how old. I'm 46 years old, okay? So back when I was in junior high is when I first saw heroin. First time I saw marijuana, I was in, I was in elementary school. Mm. And, and I think a lot of it is because you grow up, growing up in the border and seeing what happens in those towns. And I would like to, to go down there and talk to some of those areas, to some of the youth there, and explain to them, hey, there's a way out. I mean, right. just me, dude, you know what I mean? Uh, I never would have thought I was going to end up in the Oval Office. I never yeah. thought, you know, the president was going to give me a shout out. You know, now I've been I've been in the Oval Office more than seven times. Uh, you know, I've, I've, I've spoken to the president when he talks to me. He, he talks to me by first name. He knows my family members names. I mean, that's yeah, I'm just a small town kid. You know what I mean? That that just kept on hustling and hustling. And I have I have the same opportunities that everyone else had. Mm. And at the end of the day, that's what it comes down to. And people need to understand that. Don't think because you come from a small town or, you know, whatever your upbringing is or isn't, you know, you can always do something with yourself. And I want to talk to, I want to talk to the youth. That's what I want to do. I want to make sure that, you know, if I can save one out of a billion, my job on this earth is done, man. That's awesome motivation. Uh, that's that's incredible to hear that. That's, I mean, that's hundred percent accurate too. Absolutely. hundred percent accurate. Uh, so we got one question for you. Uh, do you have a lot of uh, Border Patrol agents who are brothers? Uh, this comes from uh, Worship Brother uh, Joseph Schultz. There, there is. There's definitely, definitely a, a good group. Uh, it blew up when I did the press conference about a year ago. And that's when you guys found out about me, and that's how we got connected. <laughs> yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. 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 A lapel pin. Oh, uh, that meme pissed me of brothers, off. You know, started sending me messages. Uh, there's so there's and when you're in border patrol when, when you're in the federal government 
there's an email system that only you can find yourself in, right? And you can email other government employees. And when that happened, I received a lot of emails from a lot of brothers. And then even in the Tucson sector, I ran into other brothers that I didn't even know were brothers, uh, which was funny. We didn't like each other. And then we, when we found out we were brothers, we liked each other now. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. funny. I felt the same way about yours. Oh, I, right. I knew it was coming. Right. Joe beat me to the punch. I, was, yeah. <laughs> I know. I know. See, I didn't like Joe either, but uh, once I found out he was a brother, I'm like, oh, all right. Yeah, he's all right. We have to now. That's really the only reason we still So, how come two of you guys are in the same spot and one's not? All right. So, me and Joe are, we, we're, the man can't hold this down. I, I'm, I'm, I'm not down with this quarantine thing. I'm still going to come up here and, and do this. Joe is kind of the same. Uh, same feeling. Ken's yeah. being a little bit more cautious, which is completely so fine. He is the responsible defense, one. I, I follow the letter of the law. I cheerfully conform to the uh, you know the rules of the the government of the area in which I live. And also, my wife doesn't want me to leave the house. Well, <laughs> but you have small kids at home. You're That's the, the real you're, reason. You're the youngest one of the bunch, so you're you 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 won't be affected. You'll be safe. Now, George is actually a year younger than me. He wouldn't know okay, by looking look, at him. Yeah. Look very young. George is the baby, yeah. I'm the baby. You look yeah. very young. Is that why you wear the baby clothes? I got the baby face. Oh, you got the baby clothes, too. Yeah, here we go. You got, got the gray animals. animals. Gray animals. I love going back to the gray animals with you. <laughs> That's okay. I had to wear husky tough skins as a kid. They had... So I do... You guys know I do my own podcast, you know. Yeah, yeah. Yes, radio. absolutely. It's called, it's called The Green Line. And my tech guy, his name is Andy Taylor. And we do everything at his studio. And it's funny because the last two times I've gone over here to do the, the show, uh, I, it's, I have a hard time breathing in his, in his studio because it's, it smells so much like Lysol and bleach. <laughs> and it's like, dude, like, I get it, bro, but like, you got to tone it down a little bit. It's a little bit too much. He, he just, it's just insane how much he, he cleans that place up when we're in there. Right. Um, uh, yeah, I was still going to come up here. I think for me coming up here, Joe Joe was kind of a positive. If Joe, you know, I get why Ken's staying away and keeping his distance. Um, we're pretty much talking to windscreens here anyway, so I'm not too much worried about Spittle getting shot across the table. Um, I was going to come up here anyway because, again, okay, we got our new background. This is all brand new, so I want to still keep the Freemasons podcast uh, studio thing alive. And if I had a Skype right on. with the two guys, that would have been cool. But Joe said... Yeah, now I'm coming up. So yeah, what the hell? What I mean, the hell? And now this is really cool because Ken will be the one that's right. Ken is the sensible one. Like Ken's the responsible one, and watch him end up being right, and you and I will be. But now, see, I wouldn't blame right. you though for getting sick because I, I have four you. little petri dishes that live at home with me that will spread it more. Right. Oh, yeah. Which is why I would blame you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, that's true. But um, we're also not up here swapping spit. Come on, anybody? Hamburger Hill, the movie? No. Right? I no. I know the movie. No. All right. All right. Uh, George is patient zero, and Marines are immune. <laughs> with uh, I'll be say, uh, Washer Brother Joe, with all the stuff that they injected into us during boot camp, I'm pretty sure I'm pretty freaking immune. <laughs> like I hit with everything, like everything. I could go so many different ways with that. Yeah. And yeah. Things being injected into you, but I'm going to leave that alone. <sighs> Let's we'll see. With vaccines and. I, things. I grew up drinking water in Mexican puddles. I'm pretty immune to a lot of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're good. Yeah, I think you're all right. I think you're going to be just fine. Uh, but uh, So let's talk wrestling. Oh, you want to you want to do? Actually, before we, we get into that, uh, I think it uh, we'll get together for a toast to uh, you know, Brother Art Del Cuero and all the uh, brothers that are. Out protecting the country, whether they be uh, on the border patrol or, or any of our essential employees, government employees that are really, like you said, working 18, 19 hour days during this time. So uh, I'd like to, to toast Brother Art and uh, and all the other brothers and uh, workers out down on the border. So brothers, right hand to arms, to arms, to arms. Ready, ready, ready. Aim, aim. Fire, aim. good fire, fire all. Together, brothers. Vivat, 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 vivat. I love when you guys do that. <laughs> then let's do another one. <laughs> Why not? I don't got to work tomorrow. I do, but we can. Uh, oh, God. Yeah, I'm going to work from home now. I'm about to crack open a Pepsi. <laughs> 
Oh, bro, uh, crazy, you can, you can toast it to with it. the Pepsi. What's your brother Art? Uh, uh, honest question. Do you uh, do you drink at all, or you're not a drinker, or? So I'm really not a drink. I'll tell you where where it stems from, right? So. Oh, you don't got to get into detail. I was just I like curious. How, I, I'm not. Don't think I, I'm not. I like I like it, right? And I don't judge people to drink it. Mm. And I didn't go through 12 steps or 13 steps or whatever the steps are. <laughs> uh, that that's I didn't have those issues or those problems. Right, right, right. Uh, the thing is. So when I took on the position of local president of my union, mm -hmm. uh, I stopped drinking uh, also because of the fact that if somebody calls me and – so if a shooting happens right now – You got to go. I have to yeah, go. yeah, yeah, true, true. No, that makes sense. So realistically, I'm on call 24-7. That is true. Uh, yeah. Now, once in a while, I will drink uh, like a Bush and A. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Or an O'Doul's. <laughs> um, and I have been known – on very, very special occasions, when I'm at the shrine with my brothers, <laughs> I will drink maybe one shot of tequila. Ah. Uh, uh, do you have a particular brand that you're uh, a fan too. of? No, it really does. You know, it doesn't. It does. I mean, I don't like like crappy one. Right. Yeah, right. Put your ass. So you're, you're not drinking but, the uh, the Cuervo Gold. I mean, I'm, I I like so I like I like Patron if it's chilled. Okay. Uh, yeah. You know, I like uh, there's a there's a real tall blue bottle. It's called Coralejo Tequila. It's kind of hard to find. It's got a horseshoe on it. Okay. Uh, okay. I like that one. Uh, but I've always been I, I like mezcal. Okay. And, and, and mezcal. You know, I like rough stuff. That's the stuff that. Gideon brought up here. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he did. Yeah, yeah. Like stuff like that. Yes. 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 I yes. think he called it devil sweat or something like that. We tried that. It's bad. It's oh. bad. We had some, a brother of mine from Lodge, and I'm just going to totally name drop him right now. Uh, Eric Dupree had some uh, some mezcal ones, or Bacanora, which is made in northern Sonora, and he brought it here for a party. And, you know, I tasted it. It was, it was delicious. Um, and he more than tasted it. And then uh, the next day, he, we were supposed to go out breakfast, and, you know, like a champ, he showed up, but he was sure dying the entire time we were out there. Uh, so it's rough, some of that stuff. But, I, I mean, it's, it's I, I, if I'm going to drink, I might drink that. Uh, I can tell you that when I do retire or when this roller coaster is over, mm -hmm. dude, I'm going to go on a bender like no man has <laughs> seen before. Well, well, you are welcome to come up to the studio to begin that bender, sir. Yeah, yes. get that. Yes. Or maybe uh, Ken and I, Ken and I, can head out to Arizona while George goes to Texas. Yeah, yeah. I could do that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I knew you were going to use that later. Of it's, course, this is I appreciate it. This is what we do. Um, uh, so, uh, brother Art, my uh, my mother says, uh, Dawn Mudry says, thank you to all those out there. Uh, keeping our country going. God bless and keep you safe. That's uh, for my you. old Mama Dukes. Mama, you, Mom, you've done a good job raising that son. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, but apparently Come she on. stopped at about 5'2". <laughs> 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 Should have raised him another six inches. Oh, hey, when wow. When you're that good, you can't grow anymore. You know? You're going to have all that compact. <laughs> He's concentrated. He's like a can of condensed uh, soup. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta add a little water, make them grow a little. You're uh, rough, man. You guys are rough. Yeah, yeah, right, hey, you know what? It's we're trying to have some fun, good times. You know, it's uh, like you said, it breaks away from the monotony of the news cycle and all that. And you know, we had gotten feedback from our listeners that we were busting on each other enough. Yes. So we've turned it up a, a, a little bit. We've and then in the community it. page, I get lit up called "I'm unmasonic and I have no class." Let it go. go. Let it go. Nah. Let it go. <laughs> hey, somebody. Did ask somebody did ask what the name of my my show was and it's yes, called the yes, green yes. line the green and, line uh, my shameless plug is it's available on spotify and on our heart radio oh really yeah. you're not an apple so uh, there's something going on with the apple one that it's it, we've had problems uploading it but mm -hmm. i know since I, i'm signed under contract with iheart radio Oh, oh no, okay, no cool. kidding. That's that's very cool. Well, I'll uh, download the yeah, app. And... Walmart does a fantastic job of always. I mean, they would, right? I mean, yeah, they, yeah, they yeah. You, yep. Me, they'd have to make sure it was done right. Um, right. You know, they they want to make sure it's promoted right. So yeah, iHeart does a great job of promoting it. 
Uh, and then just a couple of days ago, I found out I was on Spotify. I didn't even know. <laughs> yeah, I uh, I actually went looking for it the first time that we talked, and I couldn't find it. And I'm like, yeah, I'm typing in wrong word, but so now I have to download that, the iHeartRadio. Yeah, that now it makes sense. Well, I could I have I have Spotify because we're oh, on okay. Spotify as well. Um, and that's that's cool. And I'll I'll definitely now I know where to find it because couldn't find. I think it. you gotta look for it separate. It's got a, it's green and then line. I think it's two different ones. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But then in our Facebook page, it's together green line. Okay. Okay. Cool. I will definitely check it, that out. It's weird. But, so uh, you mentioned before you were putting aside a couple hours to this weekend, unbeknownst to you, that wasn't WrestleMania weekend, uh, which is next. Right. So let's talk a little wrestling. So are, are you gonna, are you seeing what the Warship Brother Joseph Schultz wrote? No, I have not. Please explain why Randy Macho Man Savage was the best wrestler. Oh, he wasn't. Oh, he's the cream of the crop, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Cream of the crop, rise to the top. That's right. What was uh, actually it was superstar Billy Graham had uh, uh, a great little saying that's just not coming into my head right now. Uh, oh. But Which it, one, uh, too sweet to be sour. That's the one. I eat T-bone I steaks. Talk, I, I left barbell plates. So I left barbell plates. I eat T-bone steaks. I'm the man of the hour, too sweet to be sour. You're bringing it back for me, brother. Uh, helping that's me bring it right. back. <laughs> so I had a question for you. I spoke to him a couple of days ago. He's he's doing well. Really? Yeah. Nice. I didn't realize you yeah, had he that kind of. In, he lives he lives up here in Phoenix. Okay. So yeah, he's he's up there still talking bad about uh, what you call the uh, the Ugandan giant. Oh hey, Kamala. So, yeah, he blames him for his uh, hepatitis. Oh jeez, Jesus. Well, you know. God. Have you seen? Do you know who he's referring to, Kamala? I I don't know. He was like the, he came out wearing like a, a cheetah print skirt in essence. I thought that was Jimmy Fly Snooker. No, he had the shorts. He had like cheetah print shorts. Ah, okay. I had like right. the, I this is a big, on. tall, heavier guy, white face makeup, mm-hmm. like built like Ty Bird. But actually, Ty Bird would make a great, great <laughs> Kamala. That would be a great costume for him. Um, but then he had his manager Friday, who wore a mask and like a piffed helmet type thing going on. Mm-mm. Yeah, you might have been born. You might not have been born yet. It's probably not. Legitimately, you might not. Have probably not. Um, but yeah. So if you guys go from like the rockers, then I'm good. I got all that. Okay. Or the headbangers, right? Is yeah, we're talking these? slightly before then. Slightly all right. Yeah. Then no, no, no. We're no, talking no. like the out. of like the earlier days of Snooker, Don Morocco. That's fine. You, you guys have. The, you remember the original rock, Don Morocco? No. Okay. No. So. no. Yeah, back with Big Bob, uh, you, uh, uh, Nick Bockwinkle. Oh yeah, he's a. Vern back then. No, you're going AWA on us now. That, well, that's when I first saw the Ugandan Giant. Okay, all right. I first saw him in uh, WWF back then. It was uh, some big match on the Madison Square Garden channel back then. Um, really? But well, that was that was the thing back then. The wrestling was so regionalized. These guys would just change from territory to territory, and like you didn't know because it wasn't nationally televised like it is now. And they would like loan each other out. And uh, I was actually just listening to a podcast the other day, Busted Open. On uh, yes, I, I listen to that show all the time. They were talking about like the old matches of uh, like when Bob Backlund would go down and wrestle Ric Flair. He'd go do like a month tour down in Georgia, Championship Wrestling, and it would always be like a one-hour draw or some kind of disqualification, but. Like back then, it was like, oh my God, they're going to unify the title. It's champion versus champion. And you Do you listen to the uh, to the Stone Cold Steve Austin podcast? Yes, he's been doing a lot of best of type things lately, yeah. like a lot of uh, I think he calls them Stone Cold classics or something. But I listen to him. I listen to Jericho. Oh, by the way, Brother Arch, just so you know, I wasn't uh, BSing. Here is my El Santo mask. Nice. That I've been telling you about. Hold it that way. Sorry, I was holding it. Why aren't you wearing it right now? I got boxes of luchador masks. Yeah, why aren't you wearing it right now? I'll put it on. I wore this one one just for you guys. Look. (laughs) Oh, now he's speaking my language. He's rocking the NWO shirt. Now, see, this is where where he got me. That's funny, though, because I I have that shirt, and I almost wore it. Could you imagine how I would have gotten ripped up? If Art and I were wearing matches, Joe shirts. looks like Ving Rhames in freaking Pulp Fiction. When I can hear <laughs> the dude who was in the box, the Gimp. Do I look like the Gimp? <laughs> Call in the Gimp. You remember when they opened the box and the dude was in the box? 
Pulitzer for Pulp Fiction. <laughs> You know, I got man. so many I can't even masks look at you. throw out here. I can't even look at you. I should have brought them out for you. Oh, man. It's funny because I, I was laughing. Uh, back when I knew how serious the, the, the Chinese virus was, <laughs> I was uh, I, I pulled out one of my old masks. Uh, and I don't know if some of you guys may not remember Art Barr. He, uh. he wrestled in Mexico uh, under the name Love Machine. And he was Eddie Guerrero's uh, tag team partner in Mexico. They, they used to wrestle as uh, the crazy gringos. <laughs> and, but he also happens to be a uh, brother of Doink the Clown. Oh, I, oh, know. I remember that. Yep, yep. And uh, so George... he, used to wrestle, he used to wrestle in Mexico as Love Machine. And he had his, uh, his mask was like fringes, like red, white, and blue fringes, you know, for, the, for America. There's a white mask. And he had a huge uh, heart across his face but it covers your mask so you actually have some protection there so you know maybe i'll start wearing that one around town there you go you could be the love machine <laughs> that's right i have it i actually have it tattooed on my leg <laughs> seriously that's awesome yeah well you yeah, talked dude, about my legs are really skinny and white but i'm gonna go that extra mile because i love you guys <laughs> Oh, so you're like, so, uh, so you're like, wait, 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 this is, uh, this is an actual one. leg, right? Like, Not a like, third like, leg, right? Hold on, I can't. So I got a bunch of luchador tattoos on my leg. Uh, uh, where's your brother Art? Can you, uh, could you show your tattoo again? Because Ken started, uh, talking to flip the cameras. Sure, sure, sure. Look at that. That's pretty cool. See, Ken, that's what you need to do with your white legs. Oh, yeah, you know what? This is uh thank you for the advice, brother. I really appreciate that. Now I just know I need to go get some Masonic leg tattoos and then I won't feel so bad about my I got one of these right now. <laughs> That's awesome. Like the camera literally flipped right when he was wearing the mask. Like that was freaking cool. So what uh what do we gotta do to get you like a puppet George tattoo or something oh, like man. that? There we go. You get a Freemasons podcast tattoo. Yeah, that's what you need to get. Look, I got, I got my. Oh, there we go. Oh, there we go. Is that the uh, uh, memento mori in the middle of the square encompasses? Yes, it is. Oh, that's awesome. So, uh, brother Art has a uh, square encompasses on his arm with the memento mori in the middle. What was that below? That was just a, that was just a cross, right? No, that's the the thirty second degree. Oh, it is thirty second degree. Right? Oh, Scottish okay. right. Okay. Now, I'll Very tell you, cool. all my tattoos were done, and I'm going to give them like a total plus. Go for all it. All my tattoos were, were, were done by a brother named Harrison Henschel. He's he's up in the nor northern part of the States now, uh, and he did all my tattoos. Everything that he, every single, like my masks, uh, I have a full sock, I guess, half sleeve leg, whatever the heck you want to call it, on my left leg, uh, my arms. Every, every All my tattoos that I got, I got them done by, by Harrison, and he's a brother. That's awesome. Oh, body, very cool. Which is great. Very cool. So what's next for you, brother Art? What uh, what do you what, what's the next thing that's going on in your life that you got going on? You know, I, I'm just trying to ride this roller coaster out and see what happens. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, you know, I want to finish my career uh, with with the Border Patrol and see where we're at, and, and then see mm -hmm. what I can do afterwards. I don't know, man. There's just a lot of things. Uh, I we just at this point, who would have thought at the beginning of the year? that we would be doing what we're doing nowadays, you know, here in March. Yeah. Right. You know, it's just right. crazy. I, I mean, I feel bad. You know who I real feel, feel real bad for, I think? I mean, I feel bad for everyone. Obviously, people that are dying is a big deal. It's huge, right? Mm -hmm. But I feel bad for uh, the, um, the kids, the graduating class, the high school graduating yeah. class mm -hmm. of this year. Yeah. You know, their entire graduation is completely ruined. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my I mean, uh... that's what's horrible. <laughs> I was going to take my daughter, you know, for spring break. We're going to take her. I was going to take her out, uh, uh, you know, on, like vacation to different places in California. But, um, you know, and she even said the other day, she goes, oh, man, everything's completely ruined because of this. And I'm like, you know, trust me, kid. You know, if this is the worst thing that ever ruins something in your life, you're, you're ahead of the game. Uh, because there's so much things that are out there, you know. Uh. Ken, you can you can speak. <laughs> Just say what you wrote. I'm getting a Doctor Who Cyberman vibe from Joe. <laughs> yeah, well, I didn't want to say it like on the air because I didn't know how much of a nerd it would make me look like. You know, not everyone. What was that? Too Doctor late. Who Too late. 
Ken's saying that I look like one of the characters from Doctor Who with this mask on. <laughs> clearly, oh, he, that's... clearly, he doesn't respect the culture of the luchadors. <laughs> that's right. I Come think, on now. I think, uh, I think actually, and this, maybe I'm wrong on this, but my opinion is that uh, Rey Mysterio Jr. was the one who really like made luchadors kind of like uh, – more famous, uh, not more famous, but brought, brought him more in the lim limelight. It was really, it was him when WCW uh -huh. created yeah. the cruiserweight. And that's where I started. Yeah, and that's you had Rey Mysterio, uh -huh. you had uh -huh. Ultimo Dragon, you had yes. Ruben oh, Ferreira, yes, Ultimo Dragon. you had Chavo, Eddie was in that uh, uh -huh, uh -huh. that piece back then, and they really made... Psychosis, Psychosis was there too, right? Yes, Psychosis, yep. yep. And uh, La Parca, a.k.a. That whole bunch that came to WCW... Is and always will be La Parca, the chairman of the board, baby. Yes, the original. Yeah. I know we've had this the talk before. One. The original yes. one, not L.A. Park. No, the one that died. So the one that. So L.A. Park is the original. Oh, okay, okay. So the the uh, La Parca just died, but it wasn't the original one. Gotcha. And I don't know if you knew that he had died. He he had an accident in the ring and he died several days later. No, I did not know that. Yeah, and a lot of people were thinking that it was the the one that had uh, been uh, on WCW for quite some time, but it wasn't. It was the guy that took over after he came to America, you know, and, and the, the company wanted to continue the name and the character, so they picked up some other guy to do it, uh, and that's the guy that just died he, in, he, in an accident in the ring. So speaking of the crazy mm -hmm. stuff like that, have you been watching uh, that show on Vice TV, Dark Side of the Ring, and the, those documentaries that they've been doing? <laughs> I don't mean to laugh. I thought you were going to ask me about the Lion King guy or whatever the heck. Oh, Jesus, the Tiger King? <laughs> well, we can get into that in a, in a minute. <laughs> but, um, no, the Dark Side of the Ring, they had they started season two the other night with um, the Chris Benoit story, which we won't get into the specifics of. I've seen that, actually. Yeah. That was, But they do a really good job on, on uh, those. They got into the whole Bruiser Brody stabbing last season. Um, so I have I have the Bruiser Brody story on DVD. I purchased it a long time ago, which is great. <laughs> uh, I was I thought it, it was cool to watch a dark side of, of the ring yep. of an awe story. Uh, I didn't I didn't know that uh, Jericho is actually really cool, man. To be honest, Jer I know that the Guerrero family is fantastic. Vicky's great. Yeah, I've talked to her before. I've oh, ran wow. into her oh, before. Well, uh, her mom lives. Her mom lives near where I live. I'm not going to say where it is because she's always told me, don't tell anyone because she's always there. And the, the family's always there. But she lives here nearby. Um, and, and Vicky Guerrero is, is just the nicest lady you'll ever meet. She's fantastic. And uh, it, was, it was weird seeing it. was heartbreaking. I'm, I'm a big Chris Benoit fan. I was too. Yeah. He was, he was, I was mm -hmm. at WrestleMania 20 when he won that title. Yeah. When they, wow. uh, the one they showed, yeah, I, I was there. And that's when Eddie beat Kurt Angle that night as well. Right. So I think it's – and I have a Benoit shirt that I'll wear once in a while. And uh, sometimes I'll wear it, and wrestling fans that know, they'll say something like, dude, do you really feel comfortable wearing it? Listen, man, at, at the end of the day, I don't condone what he did, but I think a lot of it had to do with mental problems, and that's what happened. Uh, and, you know, when you hear and you see Dark Side of the Ring and you see his son talk about him, yeah. Uh, I think it's heartbreaking because he says, you know, my dad's still my hero. And the person that did that is not my dad. I truly believe it was, you know, damage that he had done to his brain, and that's what caused it. And I'm on the same boat. You know what I mean? Uh, he was a fantastic wrestler. I think shame on WWE for erasing his entire legacy, yeah. to be honest. No, I, I agree with you. That's what I took away from that special, too, is, you know, his brain was so damaged. Similar to, like, Junior Seau. <laughs> And what happened with we can't him. look at these square in the face and talk about brain damage. <laughs> I mean, Nathan Ross said, "I'm getting, uh, I'm getting on all fours and walking around Central Park vibe, looking at Joe. Like it's even creepier in person." You like, should see when I put the singlet on. <laughs> when I throw a wrestling singlet on, it looks even better. No, Your but head yeah. is like ten pounds of shit squeezed in a five pound shoe right now. I can't freaking even deal. Now I know what it's like to look like you. But. Um, no, I think you look great with the mask on, brother. Thank you. Oh, you guys look great too. Thank you, brother. Art. See, that's that's why I said, and it's funny, brother. Art, I got to tell you this because I've been excited to, to have you back on the show. I've been talking about it on Discord, 
to the point where our listeners have been busting on me saying that uh, I've got a bromance with you and a man crush on you. And you know what? Screw it. I do. Oh, baby, that's all I'm going to ask. Who is the straw? I am the straw. Well, then we got to get into that's that. Right, I'm the straw that stirs the drink. I'm the straw. <laughs> you had to get him going, didn't you? You had to get him going. <laughs> so, but that was you, it's just layers. It's just layers. You don't get the full flavor. It, exactly. <laughs> it, it, exactly. Somebody has to be that, that catalyst to, to stir it up and, and get everything going. And, and right. just so you know, we've had so much fun with that quote. Um, that became a thing. I think uh, George sent you the uh, HR video yes, I when did. I got called in. No, that was great. That um, was great. But, like, I, get, I use that as often as I can, and it's become, like, a, a running joke on the show. So thank you for the gift of that. I also love how when you left the recording for the 100th episode, how you tried to lie and emphasize that you loved us all equally. Yeah. I give you credit for at least pretending you don't have a favorite, <laughs> like, a, like a good relative or like a good parent would, wouldn't say they have a favorite child. But I but, love all three of you. Oh, uh, thank you. But you love me the most. I it's had okay. to listen to that shit for weeks. I had to listen to about the straw. Even after we stopped recording, Joe's like, well, I'm the straw. I'm like, oh. The straw that stirs. Oh, oh God, you got to be kidding me right now. <laughs> like, you made his, you don't understand. You're like, you made his year by saying that. Well, another guest called me a big P. <laughs> so it was nice to have somebody actually compliment me. For one. Brother, or, or if you're watching live, if you're watching the Facebook live, <laughs> oh, God, these guys are brutal. Where's your brother Joseph Schultz? That mask shows more emotion than Ken at a strip club. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Hey, that's, that's 34, man. That's 34. Oh, Holy shit. These guys are terrible sometimes. Somebody said, HR said, that I have a, I'm giving a deformed Tin Man kind of vibe. Uh, uh, Brother Nathan. Where I'm at, so where I'm seeing you, they look. Uh-oh. Uh, say that again, Brother Art. Say that again, Brother Art. We lost you for a second. What? Where I'm at, where I'm able to see you on the screen, the mask looks really good, man. You look good. Right. <laughs> it's color coordinated with my background. Like, I couldn't have planned it. So you need a shirt. You need to make shirts, your own shirts, that says, I'm the straw that stirs the drink. Um, you know what? I'm, I'm going to. So, uh, I'm Brother going. Nathan Moss, uh, he's from England. He says, now I, uh, I'm now only one guy away from talking to the president. I need a quote for my essay, Help a Brother Out. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> that's funny. I mean, I don't even know what, who's quote he wants. My quote. He wants a quote from you. Uh, anything you want to quote? Oh no, I, I'm not Amoroso, bro. I can't. I can't divulge what we talk about in that Oval Office. I, <laughs> and not only the Oval Office, but I see these parties that it seems that you're attending, where you're uh, <laughs> taking some selfies with the Trump kids. And whatnot. And oh, like, you saw those? Absolutely. Yeah, and I'm thinking, was... man, I need to get invited to one of these. Let me tell you what happened there because I got, I got a little, att not attacked, but some of the people said, oh, well, great. You know, you're out there. You're, you're, what you're doing is out there partying with the family. So I was out there because we had a meeting. And I don't remember what it was at this point, right? It kind of clouds <laughs> the actual party. But I, we were out there. I was out there with the national president. And we were out there on business, on some other type of business. And when we were there... Uh, I post on my official Instagram, you know, hey, I'm in town, or I'll post a picture in my story that I'm somewhere in D.C., and what happens is I get followed by some of the media there. So when they see that, they call me and they say, hey, Art, can you show up to the studio? Can you give a, an interview? And, you know, and I'm always, I mean, I do it because my big hashtag is always agents' voices must be heard, and that's why I do it, right? So... When I get called by uh, by the local by the the national news by Fox or whoever, I always I always say yes. I'll go out there and help them out. So I was out there, and uh, somebody from the White House knew that Brandon Judd and myself were there. So they said, "Hey, man, since you guys are in town, uh, we're having a little get together for because of the book. Uh, it was Donald Trump's new book, and they said we're having a little get together. Can you guys, you know, just swing by and say hello?" So. You know, Brandon Judd, who's the national president, says, hey, all right, man, you want to cruise by? And I said, sure, you know, I mean, why not? Let's just go. You know, I mean, we're not doing anything. It's, just, you know, Friday night in D.C. So, and, and our plane would leave the next day. So we show up, 
And, you know, if like people start shaking our hand and, hey, how are you doing? And I'm sitting there going, like, I don't know who you are. I mean, and I'm no one special. Why are you shaking my hand? But there was so much press there that actually knew who we were. And then they said, yeah, just go up to the such and such floor, jumped into the elevator, went up to the, to the, to the top. And yeah, sure as heck, uh, D Donald Trump Jr. was throwing a party with his sister and his girlfriend and his uh, and, and their um, <clears throat> brother-in-law. And there was so and senators and congressmen and everyone else you can think of there. And yeah, I was, I was a little caught off guard. Uh, but I still purchased a book, uh, one of the books and got it signed, which was really cool. And we hung out there for a while and I drank uh, a glass of water. Excellent. And then of course, so like I'm sitting there going, wow, like we need to get in on these. We need to get a little one-on-one -on -one with, uh, one Donald J. Trump. Next time I'm in DC, you guys should, I should call you guys. You should guys should just grab a suit. Just, you know, come on and let's just go. Done. I'll go. Done. Done. Like, we're going to say anything else. Mm. As a matter of fact, I will. Our, uh, rock our tuxedos. Why not? I, I tell you what. Sure, I right. will pull my truck over immediately on the side of the road and leave it there in Uber back to my house to get a suit. Sorry about that. So I'm stealing my truck. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry for grabbing your wheels, time. man. <laughs> I was about to look out the window like someone's stealing my wheels. Put the mask on and run <laughs> outside. Man, don't shoot anyone yet. I'm I'm live on Facebook. No, we're going to have witnesses. Wait. Put the mask on and run outside. What the hell are you doing? Here, put the mask on. They won't know who you are. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. But, yeah, no, definitely. No. When you're in D.C., let us know. If you have, if you can give us uh, any advance notice whatsoever. It's like, what, a four and a half hour drive for us? Um, Three, if I'm really hauling ass. Five-ish. Five? Really? Yeah. That far? It'll so take you about four. It'll take you about three hours to get like twenty minutes from DC, and then an hour and a half to get into DC. No kidding. Yeah, the traffic hmm. around there is horrible. Absolutely horrible. No kidding. But no, we could. That's, no, I would totally that'd be freaking an easy go. Trip. That would be the traffic. Horrible. I'll tell you what, though. This last time, so I was there three weeks ago. I think it was. Uh, I had to speak uh, with a, a committee, with a, a congressional committee, about the issues on, on the border. So I was just out there. And it was right when the whole Corona, you know, my Corona stuff was coming out and it was, it was freaky. It was freaky. It was like, everyone was walking around in a haze. Everyone's still walking around in a haze. I think now, right. you know, but it was okay. The way you're tilting your head back is looking really weird. dude. don't do that again. That freaked me out. Yeah. Don't do that. That's really weird. Uh, that me. Uh, so anyway, uh, on the plane, when I was on the plane back, there was only 17 people on the, on the plane with me. Jesus. Wow. You know, it's crazy. Like, same thing with the train. Like, uh, again, I drive old 95, which is the major highway to and from, you know, back the basically Southern Connecticut and the train runs literally alongside of it. Right. And to actually look over the train and there's literally nobody in the train and it's just going, it's like, wow. You know, in the morning, you know, the commute and the train in Connecticut is insane because everybody going into New York city. So that was pretty. Yeah, I know. It's insane. I think, uh, just it's fearful at the end of the day uh, because you know last time we were talking it was right after the, the the closure of the government right and where we hadn't been paid and there was so much support by so many individuals towards government employees and saying hey you know what if you guys need anything we'll help you with this we'll help you with that once this is all over and some of these businesses start opening up I think that's when a lot of us that have been getting a paycheck need to now turn around and help out those that have it. That's, that's what's very important. And that's the boat I'm in, mm. to be honest. You know, I'm blessed to have a job that's still going to get me paid. Yeah, mm. it might get me killed and shot, but for now it's getting me paid, right? Right, right. And, and I think that's important. And there's a lot of people out there with a lot of insecurities. Uh, you know, some people, uh, and it just came out naturally. My wife was like, oh, why would you even think of that? But, you know, you got waitresses that, you know, they're not getting a paycheck. Right. You got exotic dancers. They're not getting a paycheck, you know, <laughs> got, you know, a lot of the small businesses. No, because everyone concentrates on the small businesses, right? Right, 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 right. And they say mom and pop shops, but you got a lot of people out there, single mothers that sometimes that's the job that they gravitated towards. And, you know, you know, you got to think about them too, whether you agree with their job so choice or not, they're not out there slinging dope. Right. You know right, what I mean? No. Yeah. You no, know, it's actually, they, they need it. So, 
you know, once this is over, man, people need to figure out how to start, you know, helping out with those individuals too. Now, now see, Brother Art, I didn't laugh because you actually gave me ammunition because I was going to say if Brother Joe over here was an exotic dancer, he wouldn't get a paycheck regardless if he was working or not working, just especially with the mask on. In some parts of the world, I'm Dude, he get. Dude, he'd get, he, he would be a hit in the VIP room with that mask. Goddamn right. <laughs> I'm the straw that stirs the champagne room. Woo! Red hair is considered exotic in some parts of the world. Absolutely. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> Cinnamon clandestiny in the champagne room right now. Right? <laughs> yeah, some of the single brothers will probably start helping out, you know, some of, the, some of those exotic dancers now. Oh, man. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Nathan Moss, FMP fundraiser for exotic dancers. <laughs> awesome. Here we go. Does that include me? <laughs> no. You know, it's weird because I didn't say it. When I first said it, I never said it as a joke, but everyone take, took it as a joke. And then I'm like, okay, well, then uh, let's make it a joke. That way I don't sound like a weirdo. No, no, no. But no, you no, are no, right, no, though. No, no. You're, you're making a good point. You're 100% right. You know, I even think of a, if I want to, if I can piggyback on what you were saying, bar, barbershops are closed up here in Connecticut. You can't go get your haircut anymore. I had to bick my kid's head the other day, or not bick it, but, you know, shave it up the other day. Yeah, I know. You don't have a problem, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> but my son grows hair like wildfire, so, like, you'll get his haircut one week, and then two days later, it's, like, all over again. So I had to uh, shave all three of the boys' heads. But barbershops, another perfect example. Barbershops, nail tattoo salons, tattoo yeah, shops. My, my, my wife's a cosmetologist, same thing. You know, yeah. I a lot of that stuff. Uh, you know, a lot of these people are, are, are we're going to need our help. Hell I've yeah. taken to helping out. Like, I'll, I don't, I'm not really, I'm trying to save money now on this one, but I'll go mm. out and get something to eat, but I'll pick local establishments, mm. you know, the mom and pop shops and, and I'll pick them. Uh, but at the end of the day, when you look at even those places, it's the cook and the owner, they had to, they had to have laid off the entire, um, you know, waitress staff and everything like that, which is crazy. It's sad. Um, and, and, you know, and just so they can see that it, it, it doesn't matter whether you're on the right side or left side of the aisle, you know, you're looking at these stimulus checks, right, that are mm -hmm. coming out. Uh, that's kind of like using a cheat to lock your door. You know, sure. <laughs> they're, they're going to kick and break it all, but it's not really going to help much. Right. I think what they should do, and some people are going to think this is, this is, after I say this, some people are going to, like, be, pissed off at me but I, I mean it and I and I believe in it. I think I know the where you're going. They, yeah. Mm -hmm. The way that they kick jump they kick start this the, the government right now, I mean the, the, the money is you know what? Why don't you give a uh, I don't know some type of clause or, 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 or no taxes for all the people that have been working. So instead of giving out a stimulus check that everyone gets including people that you know have been lazy and not worked throughout the year anyway why don't you right. just do a, a tax to, tax exemption to the people that are working? That's mm. how you do it. That's how it's fair. Right. You know, you and I and people that are actually working, and busting their rear end to to you know go out there and work. Give them the break. That's how you do it. Right. You don't give it like a stimulus check to everyone you know that that's around. That's I don't I just I don't agree with it. Brother Danny Collins, twelve hundred dollars doesn't <clears throat> go far in New York City. It's like two lap dances. <laughs> Uh, am I the only one who's taking the stimulus He's check? He's going to scores. That's why. Stop going to scores, buddy. <laughs> uh, am I the only one who's taking the stimulus check and going right to the gun store? No, I'm doing the same thing. <laughs> so, don't, so I'm going to tell My you some advice. Me. No, uh, no, I'm going to give you guys some advice on this one. All mm -hmm. right? You guys got to hear me out. I have logic for this. Okay, go ahead. Go. Don't take that stimulus check and go and buy and go to the gun store. Don't do it. Okay. Just don't do it. Now, I'm gonna tell you why. I don't know how private sales are done in your in your states, but I can tell you in, from Arizona, they allow private sales without any type of background checks because you pretty much we're responsible and we're not gonna sell a gun to a weirdo, right? Right. So the gun shops have been so depleted because everyone, even the anti-gunners, were so freaking out, right? Mm -hmm. That they went and bought guns and ammo. So, you know, I can honestly say all my uh, anti-Second Amendment, it's for hunting people lately, all mm. of a sudden discovered that it's not just about hunting, right? Right. Uh, but they bought so many guns. But at the end of the day, when this is over, mm. they're going to sell off their guns, bro. They're not going to keep them. Mm. So just wait it out. You're going to be able to get guns very cheap by all these people 
that uh, for one didn't want him, and for two they probably don't know how to shoot him anyway. <laughs> That's true. That is one hundred percent true. Wait it out. Wait it out. Trust me. Wait it out. There's going to be a lot of guns being had for cheap. So, what else we got, brother Joe? What's going on with your band, brother Art? There you go. I don't. I don't play. I don't. I don't have a band. Uh, I had it for the longest time, um, and then uh, when I started doing uh, border patrol work, I stopped. Um, so I, I'm not doing it. Though I have a friend of mine up in the northern border. Uh, that he plays in, in a, he used to play in a band called Iced Earth, and uh, now he's a cop, but he has another band called the Sentinels, and uh, he's, he's up there still jamming, and he's, he's really quiet. In fact, I just posted something up on my Facebook. I know some of you guys in, are connected with me on Facebook. Yep. Um, a, couple, a couple of days ago, I posted the Star Spangled Banner of a um, police officer that was singing it at NASCAR, Yes, he's yes. that's mm -hmm. the lead singer of the of the heavy metal band. Oh, uh, nice! Iced Earth. Very cool. I loved your uh, picture that you posted the other day that said something to the effect of "Some of you have never been in a heavy metal band, and it shows." <laughs> and I I think you had really long hair in that picture, if I'm <laughs> if I'm correct. Yeah, well, I had hair. Let's just put it that way to begin with. <laughs> Actually, you posted a picture a couple days ago of you coming out of Costco with the the toilet paper and the. Yeah, <laughs> that was funny. The comments even below that were even funnier. Well, I won't get into that, but <laughs> right. Oh man, your friends tore your ass. Outfit, bro, <laughs> like a European AK-47 fan. You know, rocking the Adidas <laughs> jumpsuit. You know, and rocking it, with my with my big old gangster toilet. Oh pack. man, yeah. your friends tore your ass up the. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, holy shit! If this is any comparison to what Joe does to me, holy hell! Oh yeah. That oh, even fun. my pastor was on there giving me hell. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'd seen that. I knew. Well, I know pastor, but... I know we're well over an hour here, but I gotta hear about these cars that you got, Worshipful Brother Art. What do you got for project cars, brother? All right. No, so I got a bike that I've been trying to to that I used to ride back in the day, and I'm and trying to put back together. Uh, it's a like a motorcycle. Uh, but I have an old 74 rat rod um, mm. F100 okay. that I want to get going. And I, and I haven't made up my mind what I want to do with it yet. Uh, though lately, since I've been, you know, watching a lot of YouTube, I might just find, like, the biggest, most obnoxious Ford engine I can fit in it and just <laughs> drag it out and make it a dragster. I don't know what I'm going to do yet. Um, and then uh, and then I have an old – so I have an old one. That's not really a much a big deal. I have an old uh, Grand Marquis that used to be my dad's. And, uh, and you can tell it's the old man, uh, Freemason Grand Marquis, because <laughs> he decided to put, like, the Freemason emblems, like, in the back taillights and in the back Ooh, window nice. and everywhere else. Ah. And I was like, man, my dad went all out with those things, you know? And they're all <laughs> over it. And I blew the engine on it, uh, I will say, after 298,000 miles. Uh, okay. So I'm th I threw another engine in it. And in the meantime, I have, like, a, like a hot-rotted hot out uh, Crown Vic. Um, okay. That's right. the police interceptor, and I'm, I'm trying to get I'm trying to get rid of that one. Uh, I know it's funny for some. I, I really want a Mustang, man. So I want to try to get rid of that one and try to get, get a, trade it off for a Mustang. What do you want? The five plus low? Oh, that's that's we got jokes now, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I drive a 2003 Jeep Liberty that's all beat up and rusted in the side, so you can fire back whenever you want. It's <laughs> so I got a big diesel truck, so I got a big diesel Ford that I drive most of the time. Uh, but you know, I have that project of that F100. But I really want a Mustang. I really want to trade. I, I'm I'm looking. You know, I'm on Facebook all the time trying to get rid of this uh, this Crown. So it's the Crown Vic. To be honest, it's in it's in perfect condition. Mm -hmm. I'm an idiot for getting rid of it. It only it has uh, under a hundred thousand miles on it even, uh, and yeah. it works in perfect. It's got like the lights, the spotlights that still that work perfectly. It's it's a complete. It's a it's a cop car, right? Right, right. Mm -hmm. uh, and and it'll take you from here to the other side of the country with no issues. Mm -hmm. But I really want. I, I just I just I think this is my last hurrah to try to get some kind of little sporty sports car. And I'm I like Fords, man. So I'm leaning towards Fords. So I want a, I want a Mustang. What's your I want favorite a five car? Point low, yes. What's you your know, five? What's your favorite? Regardless of what my worshipful brother George says, those are all good projects. <laughs> what uh, What's your favorite car, uh, worshipful brother Art? <laughs> Uh -oh. Favorite oh, car I, all I, time. I have so many. Uh, if you were to pick I'm one, a big, a, a big car fan. Uh, I really like the Bullet Mustang from uh, the Steve McQueen movie. Oh, that's a cool. All one. right, that's a good mm -hmm. one. Yep. 
I would have to say my favorite was from Nash Bridges, the 69 Plymouth Hemi Cuda. Hell yes. Yeah. Yep. Oh, Nash yep. Bridges. Mopar or no car, brother. <laughs> <laughs> I love that one. The convertible Plymouth Hemi Cuda. That is my favorite one. The other one I used to like, and I always wanted that one out since I was a kid, but, you know. Re- rebuilding the thing would probably cost you a small fortune. And the other one was the uh, Ford Mustang Mach 1. Oh, yeah. I had a neighbor of mine had one of those, and it was just amazing. I'll tell you what, my cousin, my cousin back in the day did have a, a Plymouth Roadrunner with a 446 pack, and that thing was mean. <laughs> yeah, so we're looking at the live feed here. Uh, so, Brother Art. Brother yeah. Art, is Angelo Chavez a, a friend of yours? Because he's saying, Brother. Oh, he's from, he's, Oh yeah, he he's from my he's from the from our same lodge. Yeah, he yeah. says you love driving Chevys. No, it's funny because I'll tell you what's funny is uh, yesterday I was out in the field and I made a joke on my Instagram because they gave me a Chevy Tahoe to drive during work <laughs> and I posted a picture of the of the of the uh, the steering wheel and I said, "Hey brothers, can you please pray for me? They gave me a Chevy. I hope I make it home today." <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Nathan Moss, George, uh, his favorite car is a Mini Cooper. Yeah, all right. Or a clown car. Yeah, I'm sure. What's the rest of them now? Irk Mobile. What's the rest of them? Come on. <laughs> uh, Mini Cooper sums it up for you. Mini Cooper. Uh, uh, yeah, no, I always liked that one, the, the Hemi Cuda. And uh, Mustangs were always nice. I was just breaking your stones. Uh, I had a, a friend of mine who's a brother, actually. Uh, he got a brand-new anniversary edition uh, I think it was the anniversary uh, edition uh, back in like 2005 or whatever the hell it was. And uh, it was a 5.0 right. all, and he freaking wrapped it around a telephone pole. Oh, oh. I was very upset about that. Uh, however, I used to work uh, <clears throat> a couple of years ago. I used to work for, uh, uh, I don't know, I'm going to give the company away, but Dodge. I was a mechanic before I was uh, driving trucks. And uh, have you ever been in one of the, sh- uh, what is it, the, the challengers like the new dodge the new challengers Holy i, I love them but they're hard to see out of man hard to see out of but i can only imagine what it's like for dude, you. the hellcat one i think it's oh, called the hellcat oh, one God. that thing is insane yeah, they're nice nice cars oh they will scare the shit out of you so border patrol picked up some of those for a while and then um and then they just went back to like the, the big vehicles like the trucks and the fords mm-hmm. and the raptors and stuff like that. And I think that's when, when I fell in love with Ford even more. Uh, when I was young, I used to drive Trans Ams and Camaros, and I used to drag race them and all kinds of stuff, right? Mm. But as I got, I got older, I, I leaned more towards, towards Fords. And, you know, as I started working for the government, they, they drive all three of the main manufacturers. That's the way they go. Uh, but I did notice that the Fords uh, take a little bit more of a beat, beat down than the rest of them. And I think that's what's kind of leaned me towards it. And, and the whole reason for the Mustang is, I mean, let's face it, Barracudas, uh, those old school, you know, Challengers, and they're cool looking cars. I'm mm-hmm. not even going to I can't say anything bad about them. Mm-hmm. But if you get one, how do you find the parts nowadays? You know, yeah, like, that's, without, the that's the problem. Yeah, that's, that's the part, challenge. That's yeah, the that's challenge. Part, See, my like, dad always told us anybody can build a Mustang or, you know, a, right. a Chevelle or something like that. It's a challenge to build a Mopar, and that's why we're going to be a Mopar family. <laughs> no, and it's, but that was the whole reason behind Ford. That was the whole reason behind Ford is they wanted to make sure everyone could afford them, I guess. That's my thing. I mean, and I get it. I mean, uh, uh, you know, the people's love for Mopar. But nowadays, it's like, dude, you need like two, three rolls of toilet paper to find Mopar parts. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, What do you say, brothers? I think we've had enough for one night. Yeah, well, let's, uh, Brother Art, thank you for taking the time. We know you're very busy. We know you're working some very long days. And uh, we appreciate you taking uh, about an hour and a half or so to sit and chat with us. We no, appreciate it. Thank you guys it. so much, man. I want to. I want to give a real quick shout out. Absolutely, go ahead. All my, brother, all my brothers in downtown eighty six. Um, you guys are fantastic. You know, we we go back. We have a group text that we go back and forth on all the time. Sometimes I don't respond as often as I could because I'm busy, but I always enjoy watching and listening to them. And it's a huge shout out. Thank you guys for keeping me sane. Thanks for the entire. Uh, Masonic family, every single one of you brothers. You know, I know on the news lately, it showed uh, a couple of brothers that had died away from this, you know, vicious mm. and disgusting, you know, Chinese virus. Yeah. And, you know, I just hope and pray that no one else is affected. 
Mm-hmm. And I love every single one of you guys. You guys are fantastic. I want to thank the three of you for being so innovative and starting this uh, the podcast. It's a huge deal. You guys right now may not understand, but you guys are a bigger deal than ever before because you're able to unite brothers in harmony through these through this podcast. Uh, and, and I want to really seriously thank you guys for that. I love every single one of you guys. And, and, and be kind and love each other. And remember who stirs the drink, baby. Yeah, baby. <laughs> I'm the straw. <laughs> I had to end it with that. I'm the straw. <laughs> Son of a bitch. But, uh, uh, Brother Art, to piggyback in, you know, on your shout-out to the brothers in downtown 86, I think we're going to give them a little toast, mm-hmm. led by uh, Right Worshipful Brother George. All right. Brethren, right hand to arms. Two arms. Ready. 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 Aim. 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 Fire. Good fire. Fire all. Together, brothers. Viva! 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 Awesome. Uh, I want to load them one more time. Uh oh. For uh, brother. Oh wow! You guys are messing around now. Nah. It's actually, uh, believe it or not, uh, brother Art. It's all a. It's all a show. We don't fill the glasses. <laughs> it's ginger ale. Oh, is that right? It's, it's ginger ale. Uh, it's real alcohol. What was, but... what was that one movie with the with the with the girl dancers or what was it called? Uh oh yeah, Coyote Ugly. Where she spit it back into the into the into the chaser? Is that yeah. what you're getting at? Yeah. No, we actually drink it, but uh, again, these are uh, nice it's very tiny little. Let's put it this way: if we actually drank what we what we you know, <laughs> if we actually drank full glasses of this, we'd be on the floor by the end of the podcast. So. Absolutely. Well, don't so. say anything. Keep K Fab, brothers. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. See, I know what you mean. I don't think they know what you're talking about. I know what K Fab is. Okay. I know what K Fab is. Right. Where you stay in character. Because actually, Sean. It's like Carney talk. Sean Michaels. Uh, you're going to go click. Triple H, the, the click. click yeah, okay. Got in trouble for breaking K Fab. Yeah, so. You know what? I'll give you that. Yeah. I'll give yeah, you yeah. that. Yeah. And actually, they did it in a hug at Madison Square Garden yes. right before they two were. of the three were leaving to go to WCW. Scott Hall and Kevin Nash. Yeah. All right. I'll give, I'll give, him, credit. I'll give him credit for that. I learned wow. something tonight. <laughs> All right. To uh, you, Brother Art. Thank you again for coming on here. You're more than welcome. I would love to. At some point, you come up here. You're able to get to Connecticut, or we meet in well, D.C. We'll get, or whatever. We'll get down to D.C. Hell yeah! I would love to get together and just shoot the shit, hang out. Uh, no cameras, no nothing. Just hang out as brothers. So, I'll make it. A, I'll make it a point to go out there, man. Seriously, uh, I'm gonna see how I can work some things out, and I'll make it a point to go out there. Hopefully, before the year's over. Awesome. Absolutely. So I'll bring you some mezcal. There you go. Oh, God. That shit again. All right. right. We'll give it a shot. What the hell? We're getting a hotel. (laughs) (laughs) And an Uber. Good thing I have points. (laughs) Uh, What's your brother, Joe? Laid it. Brothers, right hand to arms. Two arms. Two arms. Ready. Ready. Aim. Aim. Fire, good fire, fire all. Together, brothers. Viva, viva, viva. Thank you, Brother Art. Thank you, Brother Art. Thanks, Always brother. great to talk to you. Thank you. Be safe and be well. So uh, before we let Art go, we're going to uh, shut the feed down first. So before for, you do, uh-oh. he told me to remind you to remind me to remind you of a message from the most worshipful grandmaster uh, in the state of Connecticut, Grand Lodge, Ancient Free and Accepted Masons. Thank you very much. Brother Stephen W. Petrie. So this is for all those who are watching. It doesn't, it's, you know, Freemasonry supersedes across states. Um, and I, I spoke to our grandmaster here in the state of Connecticut, and one thing, uh, and he, again, most worshipful grandmaster, Stephen W. w not J. Petrie, uh, most worshipful grandmaster of the Grand Lodge of the state of Connecticut, and he asked that all brothers who are Freemasons watching this, uh, his message is basically to reach out to brothers who you haven't seen in Lodge as well as elderly brothers to make sure of their well-being um, and that's pretty much the charge that he's giving right now is to keep an eye on the elderly brothers, make sure they're in good health, and uh, reach out to them and see if there's anything they need. So uh, I was commissioned to uh, <laughs> spread that message, so I will certainly do that. But uh, cool. before we close down, uh, Brother Art, I'm going to keep you on the line, but we're going to shut down the live feed. 
So I just want hey, to I threw a message out there just to all that's I threw a message of, you know, thank you. I love you all to all the guys mm -hmm. that were asking questions that were over there watching. Uh, do you do me a favor uh, for every single one of you guys that are a brother on here that are listening? Find yourself five more brothers and everyone subscribe to this podcast. Oh, wow. Thank you, brother. Thank you very much, brother. So uh, let's shut it down. So, so for uh, the free brother Mason art, stay on the line, but we're yep. going to shut down the uh, feed here. We're going to shut down the feed. So for the Freemasons podcast. I am right Worshipful Brother George Mudry signing off. Worshipful Brother Joe signing off. And Worshipful Brother Ken signing off. Worshipful Brother Art, you want to throw your name out there? <laughs> Worshipful Brother Art, I love you all. Stay safe and God bless. Awesome. Good night, everyone. Good night, Facebook. Good, Good night. night brothers. Kill this feed.